Hello, my name is Mark Pachaboski. I work with RAN3D and Ascent doing software training and curriculum development for different CAD systems. Uh, we're going to take a look at the 3D Experience CATIA 2023, um, specifically the Mechanical Systems Experience app, uh, how to create a kinematic simulation using a design table. Uh, this process can get a little uh, confusing if you don't know where you're looking for different references, especially um, if you're not familiar with creating design tables in general. Uh, and even if you are, there are some places where you can get hung up. So let's take a look. First, I have a assembly that I have already created a mechanism representation in. So there's already uh, all the components. This base fixture is fixed. And then there's uh, all these joints that allow us to be able to define these parts rotating. I can rotate around this plane, or rotate around this plane, rotate around that plane, or it can pivot on these uh, elbows that I have here. Uh, there's a command for each one, uh, and then there's a command for the two fingers to be able to close on this hand as well. So, um, what I want to do is I want to be able to create a simulation using a design table, which basically means taking an ex uh, external file, like a text file or an Excel file, and being able to control the values associated with uh, the positions these parts will move in through the simulation. So to do this, uh, what I'm going to do is first switch over from the Mechanical Systems Design app to the uh, Mechanical Systems Experience app. So I click on that. Uh, it already has a mechanism, so I don't need to have that turned on. Uh, it wants to know if I want to create a kinematic scenario. I will build my own, so I'll leave that blank and hit OK. Uh, we can give it a name. You can give it a unique name. It automatically gives it a number at the end, which is unique. But we're going to call this uh, mechanical arm. Select OK. And um, that creates this mechanical arm kinematic simulation. You can see it here at the top. Inside is a model, which is linked to the original assembly with the mechanism representation in it, and a blank scenario. I'm going to build that scenario and be able to compile it. So to do this, we're going to start by coming in here to Law of Excitation. This Law of Excitation, we're going to have to create one for each of the commands we're trying to control. Now, this can get a little cumbersome just because of the number of joints that we have here. But I'll expand Commands, and I'll click on the bottom wrist. I can rename it so that it's more meaningful. We'll call it Bottom Wrist. And you could drive this a number of different ways. If you want a static value, you could type in a static value by hitting formula and writing it in here. Uh, if I wanted to stay at 15 degrees or whatever it might be. But we're going to control this using a design table. So we're simply going to hit OK at this moment. That creates the excitation. Bottom wrist. It's linked to command one. And it, we... We'll be able to update that here in a moment, but we want to build a few more of those as well. So I'm going to create a few Law of Excitations. I'll start with Command 2. We'll call this Bottom Elbow. Hit OK. Do this again. Um, we're going to click on Law of Excitation. Middle Wrist. We will click on this again, um, Law of Excitation. We've got three of them so far, so I want Top Elbow. I want Left Finger. Top wrist. And it takes time to rename these things, but it will help in the long run. And the last one I want to build, Law of Excitation. Select on that one, and we'll do right finger. 
Now, what that has done is that has created an excitation and a relation for each one of these. These relations are not actually needed, even though they're automatically created when we build this um, law excitation. We do want the excitations, we don't need the relations. Now, there are different ways of handling them. You could delete them, you can deactivate them, uh, and if you build this a certain way, it will ask you if you want to turn them off. But if you are trying to link this to an Excel spreadsheet or a text file that already exists, it doesn't come up with that option to be able to automatically turn these off. And it can make an issue where you can't select on the excitations because you're trying to link them to this Excel value, but they're already linked to these values here that say zero degree for each one of them. So as long as these exist, it makes it harder to be able to link it to the design table. I'm simply going to select on all these relations, right click on them, deleting them would be just fine, but I'm going to deactivate them, which makes them act like they're gone permanently without actually removing them. I do see that they're all, those are all outdated. I'm going to try updating that. It won't actually do anything until I run the simulation, so we'll have to update that here in a minute. But uh, what we can do now is we can create a design table. Now, if I go to Tools, the design table is right here. Okay, it's in that location, no matter where design table is being created, if it's for a simulation or not. I'm going to click on Design Table, and it gives me the option to create a design table from a pre-existing file or create a design table from the current parameters. Now, <clears throat> if you're learning this for the first time, creating from the uh, current parameters is probably going to be the best way for you to set this up. It makes it easier to handle. This can be done, but you need to make sure that the linkages are set up correctly before them. Uh, I'm going to start with doing it this way. So creating a design table with the current parameters. And then we can change the Excel file. You can even copy from one Excel file and paste it into another to be able to build what you want. So we can give this a new name if you want it to be custom. I'm going to call this uh, demo. And we'll hit OK. Now it wants to know what values are you trying to control using this external Excel file or text file? Uh, I want to control, and it lists a bunch of them here, I want to control the one specifically linked to this excitation, bottom wrist. Now, when I click on it, it's showing me four different parameters that are associated to it. Angle, time, force, and torque. Now, the only ones I really want to deal with right now is angle and time. So what's the angle, and at what time frame is that happening? So I'm going to select on, I'm actually going to go to time first, move it over, and then angle second. It's up to you how you organize them, but it will populate your Excel spreadsheet based off of this. If you're not seeing this angle value, most likely it's still active in the relations. So it's being linked to something and won't let me put it in this Excel file. So that's why. Now, I don't want to end there. I'm going to click on the bottom elbow uh, excitation, and there's four more different parameters. I want time and I want angle. Now it starts off with that value. It will rename it to the actual value name, which is all of this with time at the end and all of this with angle at the end. You'll see that when I click on the third one, it does the same thing. So I'm going to say time and angle. And I grab the fourth one. Start with time and angle. And you, however many of these you have, I have quite a few of them here. And I want to be able to control all of these at different points in time. So I've got all those brought over. Uh, 14 of them, I guess. I'm going to hit OK. Now, are you, or you are about to create an Excel spreadsheet. Click Yes if you want to continue or no if you want to create a text file. So do you have access to Excel? Um, is that something that's going to be an issue for you? Uh, text file doesn't need any special licenses for Excel. You do need a license for it. I'm going to make this out of Excel to make it easier. But you can say yes or no, and it will link it to one of those two files. It's generating that file for you is what's happening. So we're going to say yes. Now, it's creating this file. It's calling it design table within the 3D experience. It's going to save it in the uh, database for us. Uh, you can rename that. I'll call it 
demo design table. And we can leave those numbers or whatever. I'll hit OK. It's creating this in and saving it into the database for us. And it shows us now this window. Now, if you were linking it to a pre-existing Excel file or something like that, you would need to have that available and it would do a process of importing it into the database. So you'd have to usually use your search options and be able to find it and import it. Now, each one of those parameters is listed here. So there's time, there's angle. Now, all of them say zero right now because the way it was built, it was set at the zero position to make it standing upright like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to edit those. So I come down here to edit table. That opens up on a different screen, but opens up my Excel document. Now, I'm going to have this animation go on for 30 seconds. So there's zero seconds, one second, two seconds. And to make this easier, I can manipulate Excel to quickly drag those out, make it go to 30. So now that's at each second, this is what's going to happen. Now the bottom wrist, I'm going to have it start at zero. At one second, I want it to go to, um, let's see, I want it to stay at zero, and then I want it to go to five, then 10, so this is degrees, and then I want it to be at, um, let's see, 15, we're gonna increment in five increments, five degree increments. So it's going to be at 30 degrees after seven seconds. Okay. Um, if you were wanted to, you could delete all of this and say start at zero, zero, end at uh, seven seconds at 30. In fact, I'm going to do that. It will allow me to take all of this and bring it in so that it's going to start at zero at start immediately start turning and it will turn to 30 degrees after seven seconds okay and I could leave those 30 the whole time so let's say over 30 seconds that's what I want I don't necessarily have to have all of that I could do the same thing by deleting all of this and that does the same thing with a lot less code. The issue is going to be is all these other ones, how do I want to handle them? Uh, I may want to have them changing at different times. So this one here, I'm going to have it start off at zero, zero. At seven seconds, uh, I want it to be at zero as well. At, uh, let's see, 12 seconds, I want it to be at 45 degrees. Okay, so it's going to turn 45 degrees. I'm going to have more than one of those doing it at the same time. So I'm going to find another elbow, and the elbows, I'm going to have it do the same thing. Zero, seven seconds, it's still zero, and then at 12 seconds, it's going to turn 45. So over between seven and 12, it will rotate that 45 degrees. Um, I also want to find the fingers. Now you can cut, I could customize all of these to be able to change them. If I leave them at zero, they'll just stay zero the whole time. But here's the left finger. Uh, I want that the last 10 seconds to be able to open and close. So we've got 30 second animation. I'm gonna go with uh, at 20 seconds, we want them at zero. At 25 seconds, I want it at, uh, let's go with 90. And at 30 seconds, I want it back to zero again. I would like the same thing out of the other finger. So we'll find the, here's the excitation for the other finger in seconds. I'll put paste that in. Okay. I'm going to save this. I close it and it will pop up with a window telling me knowledge report that it was synchronized. 
all those customizations that I made are now displayed within the 3D experience instead of just within my model. Now, I could have left this middle wrist out since I didn't do anything with it. I can go back later and customize it and make it turn as well. But right now we have them left up at zero. We'll be able to hit OK. And now I'm ready to compile this simulation. We'll go to the scenario. Come over here and uh, I'm going to click on the kinematic scenario. There's all the available excitations that I created. I'm going to move them over. You hold shift, you can grab them all and move them over. Parameters, it's going to be 30 seconds with one second intervals. Now I can hit OK and it will compile this, which just means it computes all the positions, or I get preview to test it. With preview, it comes up with the experience player, and we can just see what it's going to do. Is it going to do what we wanted? It's happening in one second intervals, which should play pretty fast. And we see all those animations taking place, all those movements. It happened really quickly because each frame is one second. I can slow that down. I'm going to slow it down so that there's 100 frames for every second. And now we can see it. I was spinning it there, but it's spinning for the first 10 seconds, 8 seconds, 7 seconds, I guess it was. Now it's rotating there. It's going to go all the way to 20 seconds. It should sit there and do nothing. And then the finger should open up over 5 seconds and close over 5 seconds. So now I'm just slowing down so I can see it. We see it open. And then we see him close again. Now I can close that. I hit OK to compile. So now that it's ready, I can compile it. We'll select on global update. The simulation is compiling. And now I can play that video myself. I can play. And we see that animation play through. Okay. That's how you can link a design table to a um, kinematic scenario, uh, simulation. If you ever want to modify that design table, it's down here under relations. It's not deactivated. You can simply double click on it. Come over here to association, uh, configurations, sorry. And here we see all of those values. We can say edit table and it allows us to be able to bring up the Excel spreadsheet and make our customizations if we want to change something. Hope that helps.